Okay, we're back. Today is going to be something I haven't done on the channel before, which is four tables of live Zoom 10 and L. Most of I've done before is three, um, because I like to like try and add in a little bit of analysis where I can, and maybe like a replayer in the bottom right where I talk about some decisions. But um, I feel like this could be quite interesting. Uh, obviously, my analysis will be probably slightly less. I'm not exactly sure how that's going to go, um, but. Um, for the most part, it'll be quite similar, um, and I'm just going to think I'm going to go for a thousand hands, and um, you know, see how that goes. A um, couple of things before I start. Um, uh, people have been asking how to get hold of me uh, outside of YouTube comments. Obviously, um, I've got Twitter, which is uh, at Eastie with three Ys twenty two, and also I've got an email address, which is uh, which I'll put in the description, which is um, Eastie three Ys twenty two poker at gmail .com. If you have any questions, inquiries, or anything like that, then yep, you can get hold of me on there. Um, so yeah, that's, that's that. And one more thing, thanks for everyone that's commenting, liking, watching videos. It's really cool. Like it's, I never really dreamed that this would be anything, but just me trying to improve, which it still is. It's the main thing. Uh, so, uh, yeah, just thanks for watching and any comments you have, please, or, or thoughts about any hands that I play, whether you think I'm terrible, whether you think I played it well, that it'd be great if you could just, you could just share that opinion with me, um, either by comments or, or the two channels that I, that I, um, just mentioned so without further ado we're going to crack on uh so one thing i want to mention quickly is about my the um amount i'm making it so this guy's made it 2.7 i've been making it 2.9 and 3.4 from the small blind i think that anywhere between 2.6 and 3 is totally fine you're really not going to be seeing huge margins either way there uh, so i wouldn't spend too much time worrying about that but i do like to have the extra fold equity which is why i make it slightly more I've been called behind with the threes here um, in position and also multi-way. looks like the, the big one will also call. So that that's, seems like it's going to be profitable. We do flop a set. Um, if it checks to us, we're going to bet small. Uh, and we're going to fold the bottom right to a three bet. We raised under the gun. So that seems seems fairly good. Um, and with, with bottom set, more so than with top and, and middle set, uh, I, I'd like to try and get more money in quicker so if i do get raised i'd be i'd be you know looking to put more, more money in quickly right, on this turn i want to bet bigger we need some serious protection now against the double draws that are out there uh so i want to size for for river and i think that somewhere around close to pot or i think over betting would be slightly premature um but maybe we we could certainly think about that as well um in fact i do actually having done that just now prefer an over bet uh, i do think this guy's gonna have a queen i think going for stacks is going to be He's gonna have a queen more often than not, given how quickly he just called. So I think we're gonna size for a queen um, rather than go for his whole his whole stack. Uh, although he did call quite quickly, so he had kings, which he's played miserably badly. Um, it's unfortunate that he didn't just play that normally because we would have won a lot more. I went for the check raise on this turn bottom right, but uh, no bite from our opponent, so I just tried to bet small in the river and we didn't get anywhere. Just calling along with the pocket sevens in the bottom left uh, and then reevaluating the turn. And opening up the eight seven of clubs, uh, I think we can call once more with our sevens here, and certainly going to be calling a three bet here with uh, eight seven. Uh, in hindsight, I prefer over betting and then jamming river against a guy that's calling really quickly. Um, but I only really found that out after turn, so it's not the end of the world. It's a very bad river. It's a very bad flop. Defending the six nine to a small sizing and then folding this river. Going to have better hands gonna try and get my um six nine to show down he can certainly have like pairs tens three kings that he decided to pot control flop with uh, but we obviously have to call turn and this river is going to be probably a check fold uh, but we do manage to win which is excellent um three betting with the queens and i'm gonna isolate this short stack with the five six He's not going to fold very often. Um, this board, when he limps and then calls, is probably going to be like really quite bad for him. But he's also a big fish, so he's probably not going to fold too much. I am going to bet with the back door, um, but then I'm going to give up on this turn. I just don't think this guy's going to be folding too much. And I think if we bet here, I'm actually just going to fold. I literally have zero equity. Um, I think if we bet there, we're not really going to be forcing him off a lot of one pair hands, which is just, which is just an over adjustment to the opponent. Not an over adjustment, but an adjustment to the opponent that that I have. So, I think for sure, um, that was fine. Uh, I'm going to three bet with the ace queen. 
slightly on the maybe the loose side, but uh, against under the gun. But I think it's okay. Pretty good ball for our range. Um, he certainly can have like ace king, but he decided not to four bet though, so we have to be careful of that. But we are going to start small. Um, when this guy calls small blind, he shouldn't really have too much of that going on. Uh, this guy calls and the turn is a king. Uh, I think getting to showdown is probably going to be our number one priority here. I don't really think that um, we want to be putting ourselves in a situation with this hand. And I think that he could definitely still have a, like a king-queen type hand that he's decided to check river with. So I think we're going to go ahead and check river and try not to get check raised. And that seems pretty good. Uh, we might have found a bet there. Um, given his action on the river if we do make our hand. But I like taking showdown there on that river. It's just really dodgy for us to go for value, I think, in this player pool. I don't think we're going to get called by many worse hands, if any. So doesn't seem to be much value in that. Uh, I raised under the gun and checked back the flop with absolutely nothing. I probably could have gone ahead and bet this, but... Um, you, can, you, can choose, you can choose to bet your whole range here. would be pretty reasonable, but I decided to just... Go ahead and check that flop. Uh, this guy checked back and top left, uh, and I think we can continue small on this turn. He's going to fold out. Some, he's going to fold out some overs, um, which is good. Uh, this guy called in the big, so he definitely could bottom right. He definitely could have a five. Um, but after I check back flop, I don't expect to win very often here, but I am getting a really good price. Um, let me think about what I want to do here. <sighs> I think I'm going to go for the call. No, I'm not a big fan. I think I'm going to run to a five sometimes at least, but um, getting that price and, you know, considering I check back check back the flop, which I will do with some like, weaker races, but I'm not going to have that many weaker races from the, from under the gun. So I like his play. I'm going to check here on the turn uh, for control. And I can't be folding to one bet, unfortunately. I'm going to three bet with the king queen and start with a small bet with the king of diamonds on the bottom right and river we're going to try and get to showdown uh, and i think that this guy represents some fairly decent strength so he could even be value betting a king here i think i'm just gonna let this one go uh don't have a diamond which is less good as well and i think on this turn we're gonna barrel again with a gut shot Uh, and I'm going to barrel top, uh, sorry, not barrel. I'm just going to bet top right for small sizing with king of diamond, queen of diamonds, sorry. I get min raised on this turn and that's just a fold. Uh, open up sevens under the gun. Get called on top right, not the best turn card. Um, we're going to maybe, we're not going to be able to win very often here. Um, we three bet, so we do represent quite a lot of strength. Uh, and I think um, with the Queen of Diamonds, it's tough because it's going to have less draws. So I think if I didn't have the Queen of Diamonds, I'd prefer to maybe take this as a bluff. But I think without it, we're going to we're going to give up. Open up the Ace Jack. Um, we are. Not seem to be we three getting called like a lot of three bet spots, but not seem to flop many hands so far. Um, I'm going to check back the ace ten, pretty trash board against the fish. I, I just don't have any interest in in I've, if I've got someone green and we're saying these stats, I'm not trying to trying to bluff them or like try and win pots off them without good hands. It's just not where the value is on those opponents. So I'm absolutely fine just giving that one up. This guy's pink and he seems like he deserves it. So against pinks, we generally try to just value bet. Uh, we can even get away with going slightly bigger. I hate this guy, Pilatus, Palatius. Just always seems to beat me in hands and it never really seems to have anything but the nuts because he's such a complete nit. If he four bets me, I'm just going to fold based on that read. <laughs> I, I, I can't really call like out of position and, you know, uh, this is an interesting turn. Uh, I certainly can't fold if he jams, but I think going for small and then sizing for like river and then potentially just checking back on on the river when he just just flats is good. Um, really, really terrible river. He's probably just going to jam quite often here. He can definitely have like a six or a, or a jack quite easily. 
Yeah, and we're just going to have to have a fold here, unfortunately. It's a pretty terrible run out. So flop was good. Term is like, is pretty good as well. Rib is probably the worst in the deck as it goes, but that's okay. Uh, Ace, King, bottom right. We'll obviously it open, and the King, Jack will be if no one opens before me. But I will fold to that. Ace under the gun. Um, I th I'm starting to think about that that set hand that I made in the first like first like hand that I played. Really prefer to overbet the turn. I think, given the vulnerable nature of my hand, but it's okay. I'm gonna mix in some checks here. Sometimes gonna be slightly better for him than me usually, uh, and certainly gonna bet this turn after he checks again. I want to have some like some good when I have a nine like it's less likely he's gonna have a nine so if I had like an over pair I'd, I'd like to continue with that but with a more vulnerable hand that I've less chance of getting calls from uh, I think I'd like to just use that as a, a balancing check uh, I'm just gonna fold this to an undergun raise from a complete knit open up the ace jack here fold that Um, pretty good board for me, generally speaking. A couple of back doors. We're going to start with a bet, small size, and we managed to take one down for once, which is great. Um, eights will be a three bet. Not my favourite spot in the world, but. I don't have a calling range out of the small blind, so I prefer to use it as a as a three bet. Blue means decent, and you can see by his stats that he's pretty decent. I mean, that's a very if 24, 18, 11, you're going to be winning pretty often at this stage playing like that. And I've got him blued, which means that I've seen him do some pretty cool stuff. So, generally speaking, in this pool, if I can. Avoid it. I will avoid playing against hands against people like that, just because there's no need. Because there's so many other people that don't know what they're doing. Uh, this guy is less than full, I think. Right? Yeah. So start with a check with the queens. Even though it's a really good board for us. Um, without a club, just we'll start with a call. He shouldn't have too many kings. Um, not going to be folding for that sizing. Uh, this is not the best board in the world. I think I'm just going to go ahead and give up. A bit speculative, and he's going to slap his range quite quite often. It's a pretty good river. I'm not going to be folding this river. He might expect me to check a king on the flop. So, um, yeah, it's just it's just a standard like. That's why I like to check in these spots against poor players because they'll generally give up. Like they generally. I mean, I probably would have got raised here, to be honest, if I'd bet flop, but um, I just like to put control against people that, in this pool, they do seem to fire off really unbalanced bluffs on rivers if you let them have the opportunity. So that guy being a prime example. I uh, decided to take the jacks as a three bet and got a snap call and then a start small. We do rep like ace king, which he shouldn't have as often as us, but as a lot of people have been pointing out recently. I mean, he really should never, I don't think, be raising this board. Um, but uh, I'm going to fold, obviously. But I, I don't really... I, I check this board quite often, and usually my preference is to check, but I feel like it just seeds the, the initiative too often when they have like stuff that's just going to give up, like king-queen suited and stuff. So I'm going to call along here getting good price with 8-6. See if I can like turn an 8. Uh, I'm going to 3-bet with 10s. I could just call, but I think it, with the antis, I prefer 3-betting and 3-bet these certainly in these positions. My 9-deuce is not my favorite spot, and I'm going to fold the 8-6 on this turn. Um, 10 seems decent. Get snap called. Decent board. Start small. Get a fold on the top left, which is fine. 
Um, this guy could certainly have like sixes, or fives and stuff. Um, I think that with like aces, I might try to trap here, but I think with this hand, I'm going to go for another bet. I just want to protect my hand there against some floats. Don't really want to give free cards to floats. Um, I raised under the gun and checked this board and I got bet into, so I'm going to just call. Proceed with some caution. Not sure how many, I mean, I guess he has some suited aces that he wants to take this line with. Um, and I think that this is going to be a fold now, unfortunately. He's telling me he has a better ace and, and I, I expect to hear from him again on the river. I'd rather just, I, I also do have like some checked aces there on the flop. So, so here's the spot. Um, where I'm getting three bet by a very good player and I'm under the gun. Obviously can't fold, but at the same time, proceeding with extreme caution against this player who I've seen do good things. But can't fold to this bet. And this run out is going to be a fold. On the turn. Could have continued on a diamond, an ace or a king. Going to have better hands there to continue with. So do, do not mind folding there at all. Uh, could three bet, but he's short. And I don't want to give him a good shove. So I'm just going to call in position and let him see a turn to try and bluff. And now we can bluff, bet ourselves. Interesting give up from him. That board's going to be really, really good for him and not so great for me. But he clearly just has no idea that, what that means. So that's fine. Open up with the eights. Move this out of the way. So apart from the set that I've made, I haven't had like very many good hands. I've played a lot of pots, but okay, here we go. <laughs> Um, but I think I might go for a check raise here. Yeah, just for balance. It's not the best board for me in general, so seems seems fair enough to check. Uh, he's going to have some like hearts that he wants to call with now, so definitely want to be betting because he might take free cards with those on a paired board. He also might be inclined to raise with them. But an unfortunate fold from our opponent oh uh, yes yeah, so i haven't had that like that many really good hands so far just sort of been like three betting and trying to negotiate my way to showdown <laughs> quite a lot of the time uh, i'm surprised this guy's still playing this stake every time i see him I, I feel like he's pretty good but maybe he's just working on some stuff i'm going to start small with the uh with a flush draw on the bottom left um i am going to three bet even though he's under the gun and we've said about staying away from him if possible. Our hand is just too good to not get cold call for... Okay. I mean, this was a very quick shove, um, which I don't like very much. So I might reevaluate this situation. And he's also incredibly aggressive, but this is obviously not good enough to call. Um, I'm going to see what he has, though. It would be really helpful if this guy would call so I could get some info kings so maybe he's not i mean i don't i would prefer him to to, to shove slower i mean how good does this guy run as well <laughs> gets this guy to stack off with nines when he's just completely dead fast majority of the time that guy's never snap shoving with i mean that's why i don't like the snap shove because it just says i've got you know what i have so i'm not a big fan of his of his snap shove uh, I raised under the gun, got called a big blind. Not the best board for my range. Much better for his. Going to check back. Um, could certainly still be winning with king high, so I don't think I need to bluff. That's an unfortunate river. Um, called on the big blind here. We're going to have some eights and sevens, but he's going to have some ace highs that you check back, so I don't really want to put more money in against them. And now I hope that the, playing the board will be a chop, but it probably won't. Checked with the nine of clubs on bottom left, and we're going to start with the call. 
See a club on the turn. And river is set, which I think we're going to check call with because I don't want to get raised. I don't. I think if he had a queen, then he's probably not going to call that bet anyway. Don't like his flop bet very much. Um, but I guess he does get some protection. Um, interesting hand actually. He just flatted my three bet, which I think is which I think is good in position. Um, but yeah, I think I would have. I don't think that betting achieves much. Although uh, quite a lot of his bluffing hands would certainly continue on the turn, but I just really don't want to, because my line doesn't really look like I've got too many really good hands. So I'd prefer not to get bluffed off my hand also, because it's going to be really tough for me to continue. Checking with the tens. Do have the ten of clubs, which I'm going to try and get to see the river with. And I do manage to bink, and I'm going to go for a really small bet to extract value from this particular opponent who is green. It's probably going to snap call with like an ace or something that he didn't want to bet turn with unfortunately he had nothing start small with the ace queen on the bottom left and get a fold uh, and top left i don't really want to get check raised do have some equity and some showdown value so i'm going to start with a check and it's also really good for his range and i'm focusing now on trying to get to showdown cheaply uh, he does bet close to pot he's pretty much telling me he has a queen or better um so we're going to call but not be very pleased about it and if he bombs river then we're going to have a probably a fold yeah he knows he reps a lot of queens he called him a, he called him a big blind he did call him the big blind hmm i do block king queen and queen jack he could have but I'm not sure about the situation. I think I'd probably like prefer to fold. He's obviously representing a stronger hand than I have. Um, and this looks pretty good for my range. I think I am going to fold. Genuinely, when they do that there, they're strong. I don't, like throwing time banks at me. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I'm going to start with a raise here against a fish. I think that's close, that one, but I'm just not a huge fan. Um, locking up the board here on the turn, I'm going to go really small. And then if he calls again, I'll just bomb river. I just think that he, if he has, he, I mean, he has. if he had an ace, I, I guess I could have, because he continued, but he could have, um, locking up the board, I think we could go for a check here, actually. So we'll go for a check. Because I think he would value better an ace when I check. Maybe he wouldn't. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so he had nothing. I'm going to make sure he gets pinked. So the check was check was good against that and and like hearts and stuff I think he can certainly have hearts too when he when he calls a check raise. So um I think checking is better. Oh, as a rule I prefer to just bet bet against fish but um when they can have so much crap and I lock up the board I think it's just better to just sometimes pop in a check especially when you when you absolutely lock it and the, and you don't have obviously any hearts because they, they, that's going to be some portion of their range that they're going to want to bluff with on the on the river at least they should sometimes and the hand that he ended up with was never going to win at showdown so i would obviously expect him sometimes when he has that trash to to go ahead and and bet so i like my play checking river betting small on the turn was good to extract value from the type of hand that he had as well uh, top right, we raised pre and then checked our five three way on the flop against um, obviously a big blind range that's going to do a lot better than I will on this board. Don't want to get check raised off my equity and I'm going to fold. Calling the big blind with queen jack. Flop nothing. A couple of backdoors, but nothing to keep me interested in three way. A check would be nice to see the turn. Calling the big bummer jack nine of diamonds and flopping a flush draw, which we will check raise with. Calling with the fives. He bet quite big, which I don't particularly love. This guy pots the turn. Um, 
So I'm going to start with a call and then probably fold this river. Yeah, I mean, uh, oh, sorry, this bottom left spot and this spot down bottom right. Um, Jack nine, we said we were going to raise. I think we're going to actually call against that sizing. We get check raise from an under the gun razor on a really dry board. Oh, and overbet on the turn we have to fold to. Um, this is such an interesting spot because usually I'd fast play my bottom sets and I think I probably want to, but against queens, I think it's going to be better to, to do that. But I don't know why you would have queens. This really looks like pocket jacks to me. Um, I am going to stick to my strategy of fast playing three betting this flop. If he jams quickly, he's going to have, a, he's going to have jacks, but that's life. He folded. Um, so we could have just called, but I don't know. I don't know many people that at this stake, at least, that check raise bluff that flop. So, and I know obviously when we unlock the, you know, all the good hands he can have, literally all of them, then it it, it makes sense to, to use it as a. This guy just donks and we just have a clear fold. Um, calling a three bet with a six, seven of clubs and flopping absolute air. We three bet in this situation and got a call. I think if we go really small to try and get folds from like complete air and then fold to everything else, that seems pretty good to me. Don't want to just give up because just because he has a pot, like, pot size behind. Quite often people with a pot size behind are less inclined to you know, they they can oh I've still got this. I can I can double up with this on another table. I didn't hit anything this time, I'm just gonna let it go, kind of thing. So a really small bet means that I can get away cheaply, but also um if he jams I can get away cheaply, but also I can I can get some folds. Um this is a really small three bet, which I'm gonna continue against. Uh we raised with the okay, so we need to catch up, but I think with that price, we we have a call. Um, not the best turn in the world on the left, and we can certainly float top right with our draws. And we have a fold bottom right now, unfortunately, and then a showdown hopefully on bottom left. Uh, we just called the big blind with sevens, and okay, this is a pretty big bet. We we're looking maybe for the five of hearts to to jam on, <laughs> but. Seems like we're not allowed. Queens under the gun will be an open. As will ace eight of spades. This guy can certainly have some queens. Um, we have a lot less, but he'll know that, so he should be betting more often. And I think we have a fold to a bet. In this pool, uh, start small with queens. Would like to connect with some boards. That would be nice. Uh, against this guy's stack, we don't really have the implied odds to call, so we fold the threes. Um, we're going to take a card against the small blind range. Pretty good card. We could raise here, which I think we will do. Um, and I think big is good. Don't particularly want to get raised out of my equity, but I also do want to win with ace high. So winning with ace high is, is, is pretty good, which we do. I don't mind going either way with that hand though. Would like to flop some more hands against some, I'm getting loads of fish calling three bets and just not really connecting. Um, or when I do connect, I don't seem to be getting much action, but that's just life sometimes. I think with ace high, we have to call this turn. And we can probably fold this river. That's a very, very small bet. He called in a big blind, could have an eight, could have a six that he's doing this with, but for that price, I just don't think I can fold. Yeah. Call in a big blind with a five, six, flopping nothing. Open up the ace queen, fold that five six, open up the ace seven of diamonds.
and very deep against two opponents getting a good price this is going to be a call and this could be this could be messy <laughs> going for a check calling a three bet and flopping nothing so we started with a check here and i think against two opponents there's so much value out there obviously there's some some jacks out there some over pairs out there i think against those we're just going to end up like stacking off so it is my preference to just call with a great price and now i think we can probably just check jam this turn with more equity that we have now we have a straight draw as well or got shot at least I'm not in love with the jam after this guy bets this size, but now with the amount that's in there, I am just going to go all in. Pretty huge spot, um, but there's just so much money in there. I'm really unsure about this decision. I could just call and then let some cards come off, but I'm going to go all in. I think I, this, this looks really, really strong as well. So I could get some folds from like maybe Queens. But if they both call, that's like fine as well. <laughs> I think he could possibly have folded that, but I don't. I don't know. Like it's close. Obviously, we know that we have equity against anything that calls, and there's just so much money in there. I hate to just like miss the opportunity to get this. I, I, my hand looks. I don't think that that guy is going to find many people that he's beating there when they jam. Um, but with the added equity, against like queens and kings, I have a five as well as as a, an ace and a diamond. So I'm not even doing that badly. And there's just so much money in the middle that I just can't bear to not jam there. Call on the big blind here. And flop absolutely nothing. So we're going to give up. Um, this turn is really good for us. So I'm going to overbet. Got some really good potential. He's going to really struggle to hold on with a, like a queen here. <laughs> and now he's not going to have any problem holding on with the queen, which is why I'm going to... This is pretty much the worst river. I can think of many rivers that I would have barreled. This is the like the least likely barrel for me. Wow. That's unfortunate. Um, so we checked in the big blind here, and we're going to go for a check raise. Very deep. Uh, I do like to bet again here with the ace of clubs. And after we get called, I think we have a... A showdown situation we could could be winning against a small blind call uh sorry I, I think we yeah did we just yeah we, we could be winning against a small blind call i certainly don't want to bluff i also don't like his call i really want to look at that hand again I don't think it's a punt because of how much money's in there and how much equity I'm going to have against when when called even when called by queens and kings. I still think that I have fold equity at this stake with queens and king. It, would they have queens and kings? And because I block aces, it's more likely my ace is going to be live. So even against jacks, I have I have equity. You know, so it's really tough for me to to fold to do anything but jam. I think getting check raises a fold. Um. That would be a hand I'd like to hear from people about. I think my play is fine, and given the obviously the result was was good, um, but even when I see his hand, I'm pretty happy with my play because I think I can get some people to fold, and also I just have shitloads of equity against that particular hand that is going to have quite a lot. Uh, I called the big blind and called two streets with queen 10. I'm hoping for a give up on this river. If he bets, I'd be surprised for it to be a king. He's more likely to be repping a, a heart situation. But if I had the 10 of hearts, I might consider calling. But I think against... I think against uh, this sizing, I'm just getting value towned. I don't really particularly like bluff raising on this river either. Without a heart... Continue small with the jack 10, a really good board for our range. He does call and we have a barrel here for sure.
interesting. I'm going to barrel again, I think, top left, am I? Call the big blind, see, I'm going to. Oh, we have a fold, unfortunately, on uh, on bottom right. Um, yeah, nothing I can do there. And I think against this on this run out, I'm going to have to give up against someone that's just hanging on. Some pretty bad results there. Uh, I think that this hand is just really annoying. Um, I certainly have to barrel. Like he could have hung on with like middle pairs, sixes through queens that are definitely going to have to fold that turn. He just must have had a pretty good hand there, I think. I represent a lot of strength, like all the ace kings, and he'll know that. So I think it's just a really bad spot to be to be in. I uh, did call on the big blind with the king nine. Uh, let's see, gonna just call with the eights, so open up with six eight. And fold. Um, start with a bet with the eights, so maybe we can check back some turns. Bet this turn with the king for sure. Definitely want to check back this turn for some, for some pot control. Fold the 10 of, uh, 10 of spades. Pretty good river. Not enthused about seeing a bet. Um, defending with the ace jack of offsuit. Uh, I don't particularly love this situation, but I am going to call. Too much of that going on in his range that he decides to take his bluffs. Um, and against an unknown, I just prefer to give up. If I bluff here, I'm just bluffing way too often. Uh, I've got a clear give up there and a clear three bet top left. Another king on the turn. Got a couple of options. We could start by continuing small. I think continuing small seems good. Um, but then again, I'm have a lot of checks on this turn that want to pot control, so I am going to check. And he should have a, like a really weak kind of range going on. I'm going to bet really small top left, obviously. And we get one caller, and I think going small again seems good. Uh, and on this river, we're going to just go for value against some weak hands he's just completing it so he's just not going to pay me very often um here on the turn yeah i'm going to go small again and on this river we are going to jam flopping well with the Ace 10, um, but we're going to see like loads of folds and then sometimes an eight from him. So I like to just take this as a check to protect that checking range. And he might decide to do something on the flop or on the late street. And we also get to, to bet bet as well when he checks behind, which I like. Raise up with the ace jack and see a call. Start with a small bet. Our hand is different to the ace 10 hand because we were blind versus blind in that hand. And also because we have a more vulnerable hand than we had there. There was no card overcards that could have come to disrupt our action on the other hand. So I prefer to just obviously bet there. I mean, leaning towards betting is obviously always going to be better at this stake, I think. But I do like to have some traps because quite a lot of the time uh, people will barrel when you show weakness. Um, we get three bet here and I think I prefer to 
just cool. I don't know why my taskbar is coming up and ruining my life. Let's see if I can get rid of that. Please go away. Never mind. Um, I'm going to float here with the two overs. And this turn is garbage. So we're going to give up. Jack of spades, top right. Try to get it to showdown if we can. If we can't, I'm going to open up against Palacios because he's complete knit. Don't know why I can't get rid of my toolbar. Defending the 5-4. Folding the king queen. There we go. Don't know why that works, but apparently it does. Oops, that was shouldn't have been a fold. So we're about just over halfway through. Um, can't say I'm overly. What is this? Uh, can't say I'm overly thrilled with some of the spots. Um, to be honest, I haven't had like that many hands. And I think that that ace, queen, diamond hand where I flopped a flush was pretty unfortunate that, that river wasn't the best river for me. I, in fact, I could have probably checked, but then he probably would have just... I could have made me a bit smaller. I don't like to check too too much, and I think I'm doing, doing a, lot of, a lot of trapping. So I decided to take that one as a jam, and I decided for jamming anyway. I just, think, I just don't think the river was a very good card to get paid on. Obviously, three betting the ace king of diamonds and stacking off if required. Ah, uh, so small, like I just can't fold. Now I can. <laughs> Um, I would love to f cold four bet here. This is like a hand that I would like to take as a cold four bet, but I get to this green with this terrible sizing. I just don't think I have like any fold equity, which is pretty important. You hate to see that flop. Flopping the nut flush draw, raised under the gun. Really good ball for my range. Probably going to see loads of folds here. Get check raised. Uh, so he's basically saying he has sevens or deuces or a flush draw. Um, uh, I don't mind three betting here. So I will. Obviously, like, he just has, like, the, the narrowest amount of um, value hands that he could have. So, obviously, when he's bluffing, then he's going to continue on turns. But I, it's not like I have a made hand, right? So, I need to make my hand in order to get more value out of him. And I'm going to find myself in tough spots if I just let him go three streets of bluffing, if that's what he wanted to do. So, I prefer to raise and then I get value from considering he has, like, no real good value hands for check raising there which is why you shouldn't really have a check raising range on that board as a, as a big blind um i think that he's more often than not going to have a flush drawer even though i do lock up some flush drawers so i prefer to prefer to raise and try and get value from those quickly and if he wants to jam obviously i'm calling fold to that four bet going to overbet this turn He's going to have a real hard time quite often because of um, he's in the big blind and he only called. If he calls, he has an ace and then I won't trust him to fold it on the river. Uh, I bet this turn to check back. I bet this flop to check back turn, which worked out really well. And then I check back on the turn for pot control and now I've got a full house. So hopefully this line will work out really well for me. And he should bet quite often here, but he doesn't. I do get called on this turn, which is really unfortunate. I feel like he's just going to have an ace. Um, and I 
don't think that if I bluff here, it's gonna it's gonna work for one and two. I think I'm just gonna have like way too many bluffs if I decide to to, to barrel off here. Because if I'm bluffing with this, I'm just bluffing with like all of that, and I'd rather do it if I just have diamonds. And I knew exactly what you had, but there was nothing I could do. I'm gonna go for a decent sized river bet here. He can certainly have like a, a jack that he's trying to get to show down. That's very optimistic. But my line was like, I think, a bit dodgy from his perspective. So that, that probably got me paid. Oops, I didn't mean to fold that 10-9. That's annoying. Um, I think I'm just trying to get ace-4 to show down here. I'm not allowed. Checking back with the 8. Don't want to get check raised. Try and get my eight to show down. Open up the couple of aces on the button. Fold that one and call the turn and fold this river. Do, 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 do. Uh, fold here and here and here. Uh, I'm not interested in calling that bet. Open under the gun with the ace three. A few easy folds as well. Uh, open up these sixes and certainly defend the six five. Sometimes even three bet. Um, which call for now? Against Palacious, uh, I'm going to just call. Don't really want to let him have flops in position. Also, that's a really good board for him that he's going to continue on. I can't raise because I shouldn't have a raising range, so I'm going to call. That's annoying because I can easily have a four. Um, still really not going to be raising and most of my range here, so I'm going to call again and check raise the river. Wow. So he just has a king. Um, this guy's too much of a nit to be bluffing here. It's really hard to for me to imagine him bluffing here. I've played against him a lot of times. I do have to raise, obviously, because he can't have... I mean, he could have quads, but that would be just disgusting. I wouldn't put it past him. He's, he's done it to me before. Didn't get snap called. So he probably doesn't have a king. May have been bluffing. Interesting. So I need to make a mental note that he actually is capable of bluffing. Um, and I probably put that down to the fact that I just flatted the big and he just took that to mean I wasn't going to have many kings and I was going to find a pop size river bet. Very difficult to call. But unfortunately for him, I had a, I had the goods. Um, this is like the worst sizing I've ever seen in my entire life. So he's deserved the pink. Um, I raised, did I hear? I think I just flatted actually. Must have done. Yeah. Against the pink, it's a clear check. To try to get to showdown because pinks aren't folding. And if we're if we're gonna label, we might as well pay attention to our labels. Start small with the ace eight after an open. Wanna protect that. Hate getting check raised, but we are gonna call. Did he he could yeah, obviously we block eights, but sixes and deuces are in there. And now we're going broke. Very unfortunate turn if he does have sixes. Against like his flush draws, then we're going to just have to go ahead and just call this. Obviously, if we just smash it in now, he's going to call with an eight and then all of his boats. But And he's going to have a boat like super often, unfortunately. Now we have a, be a better boat if he has a six. A set of sixes. He just had five, so he was, he was just bluffing. So I think, yeah, our line is just way better against um, the hearts in his hand. Because if I if I if I jam the turn, um, I mean this is just a terrible play. In fact, you're gonna have that. Um, if I jam the turn, then he's gonna call with an eight, which I beat. But he's gonna he's gonna call with sixes and deuces anyway, and he's gonna fold all of his flush draws, which are gonna be quite. a more significant portion of his range. I'd prefer to keep those in. 
three bang on the top left. Probably could have just gone ahead and just folded in hindsight, given this guy's stack is small, but, and obviously we have a, just a complete nothing hand on that flop, which we have improved with, but now, <laughs> now we have a pretty clear fold. I'm interested to see what's going on here though. Ace eight of clubs. I don't know. I mean, it wasn't doing it as badly as I thought. Um, 10, eight, super close. I really hate folding, <laughs> so I'm not gonna. River to set, top right. So we're gonna go for some value. Call the turn with the, with the eight that we made. He bets again. Uh, he checked back the flop, bet the turn, bet the river. I think we have a cycle. That's a good bet from him. I like that a lot because he's going to get value from my hand there. Uh, I'm going to raise this flop with bottom set. Loads of stuff to get value from. Hopefully this guy continues as well. Ugh. Not my favorite, but I do have the three of hearts. Doesn't matter. Oh, it does. Well, it didn't matter, but I got there. <laughs> um, but yeah, really good result there. But, you know, whatever. If we're going to have a, Every time I have bottom set, I'm usually fast playing. Just because you unlock unlock the um, the stronger parts of there, well, like the the top end of the board, they can they can stack off with. Especially when they've got a small stack, he's just not going to be folding top pair. And obviously, we want him to have top pair because that's what sets do really well against. Couple of clear opens, couple of clear folds. <clears throat> Palacious in the big. Get three bet by I don't know this guy at all, but he's green. Don't mind calling, but I think because I'm under the gun, I'd rather fold. I do tend to give slightly more respect to that. Um, not strong enough to continue with the queen ten. Ace three is interesting. I think deeper we're gonna just tack on another big blind and just three bet it. Hopefully Palacios doesn't wake up with kings. Get a quick call and see a pretty good board for our range and hand. Just gonna start small. Um, against the three bet, we're gonna four bet, get it in with ace king. In position, I think your three bet should be sort of minimum min click back. And he was bluffing, which is good. Because if he wasn't bluffing, he probably would just have me at this stake. Everyone that's watching this probably got a good idea of what I'm talking about. Obviously, he can have like hands that we're doing fine against. So he's not going to stack off these queens is my point. Not in this stake. Flopping another set. I couldn't buy a set the other day. I'm just flopping bottom set for for, for fun today. Um, I am going to raise as we do with our sets, bottom sets we've been talking about. He's going to have loads of stuff he can continue with. It's probably a really good turn. I'm not going to check raise many nines. so And it means I'm less likely to have a set of nines. So he should be pretty happy about that turn. Uh, I'm going to go for uh, about half pot. Seems good to shove river with. He can't fold that sizing with an over pair unless he's god. So I think it puts it, I think it puts his whole range in a real tough spot. Don't want to let him get away with it by by betting too much. I could have even bet smaller there, but then I would have had a, an awkward river shove, and I definitely wanted to shove river. But I think maybe betting smaller there would have been better in hindsight. I, I, obviously it's not like if I was going to bet smaller I would have bet like four bigs less so I don't think it's a big deal it's a pretty good board for our ace seven of clubs mm. 
we get called and see a an eight. I think if I didn't have the pair to go along with my draw, I would probably overbet. But I do, so I think I'm gonna I could even slide in a little check here with a nut flush draw. It's a real shame that he snap checked that river. I think I, my check buys a lot of river bets. Uh, I think he's going to have a real tough time calling here, so I'm going to bet real small. Yeah. His range is just like pretty shit for that board. If he has a flush, he's going to raise me when I bet small. And he might even decide to, to bluff raise me, so I prefer a smaller size. It, just because you have a good hand doesn't mean that you just need to bet like bigger because people will just fold and you don't give them a chance to bluff raise or raise with like, say say for example, I over bet that river and he had like a good flush. He can no longer raise with it, but if I bet small, he certainly can. Pretty good ball for my range, bottom right. We will continue. Also good ball for my range, top right. Same reasons. Get a couple folds, three bet the queens, C bet the ace queen with a view to checking back some turns, specifically that one. Certainly could still have the best hand, don't want to put any more money in, no point. I've seen better rivers, but hopefully we can win. We do win, that's a pretty good result. Checking back the queens, and that's a interesting turn. We are gonna bet small. He snap checked the turn, so we might even get some folds here. Yeah, figured. He's gonna have like nines there, I guess, when he, when he does that. He's done with it, you could tell. Open up the sixes, three bet with the ace queen. Gonna be probably better for me than him, this board. And we do get another fold, which is lovely. Gonna have to size down slightly against this opponent, who has less. Don't expect to get many folds. Gonna three bet again with the eight seven in position. Just aggressively three betting, just to people just under defending and also not taking enough consideration of the antis, which we love to win. That's a shock in lack of connection on bottom left, but as we've been doing recently, we're just gonna see bet because it's a good board for us generally and get loads of folds. Same for top right, loads of folds. Seeing a lot of like those really good boards for the initial raiser. Open the ace do seems about right. Fold that, fold that. Um, ace jack, we're just going to defend. Ace of diamonds is good. He pots, we can't fold, but we don't love it. Now we can fold. Really odd because it shouldn't be that good for him. But hey ho, he's telling me that it is. And this is going in against these two stacks. Nothing else to be said about that. Uh, and not at all surprised to see kings and aces here whatsoever. But obviously, we have no other option. Also, not surprised to see ace nine off. Because why would you not have ace nine off? We need to make sure that we pink him because we know that if we see him again, we need to be sure that he's... I don't think this guy was supposed to be pink. We need to be sure that we have that information on him so that we can do really exploitative plays and stack off with less than we would normally do. Another good board for our range. Top left. We three bet with the ace deuce of clubs and didn't get the best board for a range. <laughs> so we are gonna actually just give up. We don't need to bet every single time. This isn't gonna connect with me very often. Obviously I'm gonna have some over pairs, um, but he's gonna have like nines and jacks and you know tens that aren't gonna fold and sometimes even queens at this stake and you know queen jack, stuff like that. And it's just, yeah, it's just not a board I'm gonna get many folds on. And if I bluff with this, like I'm just way too bluffy. I could have like ace, deuce of spades, hearts and diamonds if I want to do that. 
and I'm going to win approximately 0% of the time when this all checks around. But I'm not bluffing. Damn. Um, start with a small bet bottom left with the flush draw. Get called, and I think we have a clear bet. He called quite quickly. I think he would have at least considered raising with an 8. So, feel pretty good. Hmm. He can certainly have an 8, but as he has the nut flush draw, we are going to call. And then probably fold to a bomb. Unfortunately. Just going to think about this a little bit. I think I would have would have expected to see him raise flop with a flush draw. I don't think he would have chosen the turn to raise flush draw with, especially when it's an ace that you know people deem quite good for my range because it is good for my range. So I'm just going to go ahead and fold this time. It's an unfortunate spot when you like really frustrating because when you have like, such a you connect so well and then like you turn even better. It's really annoying to just give up, but. When you look at it, it just seems like a really easy fold at the stake, to be honest. I think I prefer to just call under the gun this deep with tens. Um, what I like to do here actually is just call. to let this guy in as well and try and flop a set rather than raise and put myself in situations where this guy doesn't fold and we see over cards. I don't know. This is like a really weird play, but I do think that I don't have a calling range in the small blind at all, but I just think that well, obviously I do here, <laughs> but I just think sometimes I'm going to win more there by let, trying to let this guy in too. I think it's optimistic, but I think it's okay. Backed into a set on this river, trying to get value from a queen. As long as he didn't play some funky flush like this, then we're good. Check call with the jacks. And now I just think we have a fold, unfortunately. Obviously, we have a gut shot, but pff, we don't really have any like good implied odds either. So I prefer to just give up, although it really doesn't feel very nice. Uh, I have a really close spot bottom left where I really feel like just going ahead and calling. It's a pretty shit hand, but top right we raised and then C bet and then just gave up, which seems good against the green. Bit too loose, ace five there from that position. And certainly called along with my seven six, flopping nothing. This guy's raise size I don't particularly enjoy, but he is getting three bet. Really not in love with this. A, a snap four bet from an unknown. I think we can we can just get it in, but I mean you loving in life against most people, but sometimes you just get a real sucky feeling <laughs> that something dodgy is going on. We elected to raise with the seven five here, and now we do have some showdown value against some flush draws. So I'm going to check behind. <laughs> Wasn't the hand I was expecting to end up with. I don't think he's going to have a set, especially when he checks the river. Um, but he definitely can have a queen. So I'm going to bet on the larger side because the diamonds all missed. And if he has a queen, he might be inclined to think that I'm bluffing. So we are going to go bigger and we get a good result. Yeah. I don't like his call with a diamond because 
I, I don't mind his call with without a diamond, but if, with a diamond, I think that's just a cliff hold. Uh, check raising bottom right. Just kind of call obviously here. I don't really like his decision to raise, no matter what, no matter what he has. Definitely going to slow down on this turn. I don't really want to bet and get check raised again. And I'm going to call off, snap some bluffs off on the river. A bit small. Uh, top right is kicking off, and I've just managed to bink, which is nice. Got a bit really small. Reevaluate. Uh, I'm going to get this in on the flop. I block all the sets. If he has an overpair, he's like, oh, wow. We still have like some decent outs. That's definitely, I believe, one of the outs that we have. I think that that was an out that we had. Pretty sure we had a full house there. Uh, below to W is pink. <sighs> Do I give him a card? I'm not folding anyway, so what difference does it make? Try and let him bluff river. He might bluff river because he's terrible. So hard for him to have a hand. <laughs> Go on, bloater. Four bigs. Not a big fan of that. I think the rest is what we're going to go for. I do want to talk about that 10-9 hand again. Call. 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 No. Wow, he had some outs on that turn. <laughs> I'd have been pretty upset if I lost that hand. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I want to talk about this hand quickly. Hello. Okay. Um, the reason I fast played is because if I call and there's like an eight, and for some reason he's fast playing an overpair, I mean, obviously it looks like he has a really strong hand, but how can he have a good hand when I have just everything? <laughs> he could have like Jack Queen, which I'd rather just get in, you know? So, uh, I could call here, but I'm not going to. Um, I don't know. Like, I, I don't. I can't get my. I can't get my replay back up. <laughs> um, it's just like I don't want to see cards that slow my action. And obviously, he could just be like, being like, "Fuck it, I'm not folding this hand, so I'm just going to go with it." If he had like kings or aces, um, obviously he can have a sevens, but. Blocking tens and nines. I'm thinking I want to get money in sooner rather than later, so I don't. So I avoid like if it was like ten nine deuce, I definitely would have just called. Um, we're going to give you some action with the ace deuce, and then I think we're just going to give up. That seems reasonable. Could three bet could just call. Think against the small stat. We don't want to give him a clear jam, so we're just going to call. We flop trips. <laughs> um, Calling the big blind. Don't mind checking back here. Don't want to get check raised. I know it's like questionable, but. Oops, I meant to bet. I'm really sorry. That was terrible. I did definitely meant to bet that turn. <laughs> I just was looking at another hand and I accidentally didn't. Sorry. I definitely meant to bet that turn. And I was going to bet larger. May work out for me though. Yeah, that was terrible. Well, I didn't mean to. Nine five is pretty shit, but everyone folds too often, so we'll go ahead and take that. Calling a big blind with the queen six, and I think check call seems good. So we will. Ten of spade, don't want to check raise because, you know, we unblock the ace, which he can certainly have if he bets twice. If he checks and we don't bink a spade, we'll check again. If we bink two pair, we will bet. Trying to get value from an ace that he checked back. As soon as we unblock the ace, I think overbetting is better. Cool. Don't raise. Just call. What? 
What? This guy's such a gigantic nit. He can definitely have just like, oh, this is a horrible spot. I've only got nine bigs in. I don't think I'm going to have like, oh, it's just so much money in there. Oh, I really hate this situation. I'm going to fold, I think. I don't think I'm going to have like a huge edge in this pot. I'm going to fold, but jamming is seems really nice too. I just, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like I'm surprised by these hands I'm seeing for sure. Ace queen suited, I certainly would have gone for it, I think. Even though it doesn't seem like it's a huge difference, it's like, it, I feel like it kind of is. I don't know if, I mean, anyone watching that plays a lot of 10 and L will know that you don't see that often that there. I think at least queens is what I'm expecting to see. So maybe I'm just like way over adjusting there, but it's not like I, it was button versus blinds. It was, it was also the cutoff. So I, I just think that, I think that that's a tight but okay fold. But I certainly don't mind being lambasted for that fold. It's just, I guess I could have just called, but I'm not in love with that either. It's quite a big raise, very big raise. Anyway, we're coming to the end of the session now. Um, we've obviously we've obviously done pretty well. Um, I think we've played pretty well for the most part. It obviously is harder. I haven't played four tables live ever, um, as, on, as in like recording. So it's really difficult to not make any mistakes, but I feel like I've done a pretty good job um, of displaying how I generally play when I play like this. So I'm pretty happy with the with, with the outcome and obviously how I've played is, is there's definitely, can, you can make improvements, but um, I think for the most part, I played really well. There was a couple of really interesting situations that I... Could have gone either way with, but I think that overall my play is pretty profitable for the most part. Um, we'll, we'll take a look at the results as well. At the end of this, we've played our thousand hands. Uh, we look like we've got some easy folds going around here. Uh, this we ISO'd and he called so that he shouldn't have too much of that going on. Gonna give up top left. Oops, that was a really small three, but never mind. Did we just win with king high? That's good. We love winning with king high. And a couple more folds to do before the end of the session. Then we'll just wrap it up by having a look at the the graph. I really like my stats as well. 24, 19, 10 seems really good at 10 and L. And one more table to to finish, and then we're going to take a look at the uh, the results. Could three bet here. Don't think I will against under the gun unknown, and we're done. So yeah, like I said, I think we played well. I think I played well. I'm really happy with how I played generally. Um, a couple of really interesting spots for a huge stacks. Um, I ran pretty well in some of them, in two of them in particular, um, but also. Uh, it's not really about the results and running well after we made the decisions. It's about what decisions are the best to make. And I think that we made good decisions in those hands regardless. Um, but anyway, we're going to just bring up this, my tracker. Two seconds. So we're going to stop getting hands and we managed to win three and a bit binds, which is really, really good. Um, um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. That that was obviously the biggest hand, and I think on evaluation we played that absolutely fine. Um, we lost a couple, but we didn't lose any like big pots, so that's rare for ten and L. Usually you're going to lose some pots, um, but yeah, uh, I think on the whole, uh, yeah, I'd like to hear some feedback. Like I said, any play you think, if you, even if you want to just write in the comments that I'm shit, look at that hand, what the hell are you doing? That's what I want to hear because at the end of the day, I made this to to um 
improve. And if anyone has any ideas of how I can play a hand better, I'm not proclaiming to be the best player in the world. I'm proclaiming to be, you know, good at 10 and L. I think I'm, I'm a, oh, I know that I'm a winning player at 10 and L. Um, but so I, I'm not saying that I'm the, I'm the best player in the world. I'm just saying, I'm saying I, I, I think how I play is going to win at this stake. And um, anything that you guys want to want to add, want to say about my play, I always want to hear about it. You can get me in the comments, YouTube. You can get me at AC22 on Twitter. And you can also fire me an email and I'll put all these links in the description um, at AC22poker at gmail.com. Um, but thanks so much for watching. I hope people learn something. I hope people, um, the best thing to do when you, when you look at these things is, is look at the play and see if you think you would have done the same thing or see what you can take that you think is good, see what you, see what you can <laughs> exclude that you think is bad. Um, but mostly this is like a video how do you play 10 and now this is how i play 10 and now and i think it works really well so um just one more graph i'll show for the session um which looks good uh we won 30 big blinds 100 which is <laughs> which is high um uh i want to get rid of this taskbar but yeah we um we played pretty good i think and yeah i can be happy with it so yeah, any comments, thanks so much. Really appreciate everyone watching, commenting and all that stuff. It's really cool to see. And I will see you again um, in the very near future with either another episode of Punt or No Punt or Quarantine Grind. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys very soon.